almost there guys one more month until the end of the year but before we can move on to that final month we got to go ahead and wrap up november Hey, what's up, bookworms? Mike back with another monthly wrap-up, this time for November of 2022. Yes, guys, we're getting very, very close to that time where I got to start making all those decisions, like my best book of the year and things like that. But before we get there, we got to talk about the best things that happened in November. So that's always a fun, fun time on the channel here. So let's begin, guys. Like usual, let's talk about what I read in the month of November. I read four novels and three novellas. Now, one of these is kind of a cheat because I kind of left it off last month. And and the thing is, is, is I it actually did finish it on November the 1st. So it should technically count here, but I read the bulk of it in October. So I was going to count it on that list. Anyways, I'm talking about Let the Right One In by John Linkvist, a very, very good book. Very, I want to say very different than the movie, but it did definitely feel much different than the, the movie we did. I'm talking about the, the movie that came out in the States, which was uh, Let the Right One In, or Let Me In, I think is what it was called here in the States. But a book, obviously, about a young a young preteen boy finding out that uh, his next-door neighbor is a vampire and the things that he would go to uh, to kind of earn her trust. Let's just kind of leave it there. But a very, very cool book. I think Stephen King fans would probably enjoy it quite a bit. Very, very spooky, but very much a character study and very much a, a protagonist that's almost in that Todd Bowden at pupil sense of it's not going to take much for this kid to maybe be a little bit of a psychopath. And you can see those things very clearly in that book. But a very, very great read. I don't think necessarily it's something that has to be read uh, you know, in spooky season because I think it might have some frights, but wouldn't anything I'd call really a, a horror novel as much as a thriller and maybe a supernatural thriller. But uh, yeah, definitely, definitely recommend on that one. I'm sorry I forgot to talk about it last month. But again, like I said, I did finish on November 1st, so maybe it should count on this list. Uh, the Mad Ship by Robin Hobb did a review for one of the channel and lots of things I had to say about it. And I also did Ship of Destiny by Robin Hobb. So that took the bulk of my month, guys, was these two books are massive. They are big, big, juicy, juicy books. But it was one of those things where everyone was kind of concerned because they know how I feel about nautical books and they, they weren't really sure how I was going to feel. But I had a great time with this trilogy. Uh, I said if I was really, really grading the books, it would have been like a nine and a half, a nine and a quarter and a nine overall. So I think that this is just an amazing trilogy. And it didn't matter to me at all that it was within this, the realm of the Elderlings, but I didn't see any of those characters really from the original trilogy. And it just kind of what I loved about it just kind of helped build that world. And I really did appreciate what she did with that trilogy. And I'm excited to continue with Tawny Man in January. Desperation by Stephen King. This was a reread as I continue to roll through into the multiverse. It was kind of weird. Is this one that I said that I didn't recall which one I liked more because Desperation and The Regulators dropped on the same day. And they're kind of, kind of the thing is, is it's kind of the same story. One he writes as Stephen King and one he wrote as if it was Richard Bachman writing it. And so it's not exactly what I say. It's, it's just flat out the same story. It is kind of like some other worlds in these, you know, a uh, different path of beam kind of thing to it. But in my memory, I couldn't remember. I knew that I liked one better than the other when I read them both on release day way back in 96. But I couldn't remember which one I liked more. But I was a little mixed on this one. I was a little mixed on the reread. I felt like it was the rare miss for King when it came to character. Because uh, besides like the two of the main characters, I didn't really connect with a lot of the others. And some of them I flat out hated. And I just wanted to see it. Not like in a, a, he makes you hate them. And, you know, it's, it's better to have a rea negative reaction than no reaction at all. No less than like, a, I just want them to go away. I don't like these characters at all. So very rare for Stephen King. But, you know, it does happen. that In the mid-90s there, I feel like he was kind of trying some things. He was going back to some things that worked for him. You know, he really did embrace into horror again with that novel. But there were some things I felt like he kind of missed on. And there were some continuity things I had problems with. Anyway, I talked about it in a full Into the Multiverse if you want to go and see all of those problems. Then I started my getting back into the expanse, guys. And I had a couple or three, actually, uh, novellas that I wanted to get into before I got back into the series proper. Now, two of these, actually, I wanted to kind of read these in chronological order, as in like timeline order, the, the way that they happen in the universe. Now, Drive takes place like 150 years before the first Expanse book. But since I was actually going to be starting back on book number three, I said, let me get those ones that I missed originally. So that was Drive, which is a great story, you know, basically about how they created the technology that made it to where we could explore our solar system. And it's a really, really cool story with a tragic, tragic ending. Because again, like this guy just makes this discovery of a lifetime. 
and he just can't do anything. He doesn't basically around to reap the rewards of it. So, you know, innovation uh, it has its limits and its cost to pay, I think, is kind of the message there. The Butcher of Anderson Station was a really great read. And both these books, guys, are like 30 pages. So you can read them in one sitting. I like Butcher of Anderson Station because Fred Johnson's a character I've really, really liked through the first two Expanse books. So getting to see a little bit more about him, getting to see this event of the reason why they call him the Butcher of Anderson Station, seeing how he got involved with the OPA and stuff. Really, really good backstory to that character in a few short pages. And you get more Anderson Dawes, which is a character I wish that we saw more in the main series. So a really, really cool first couple steps in these novellas. Then I got to Gods of Risk. And guys, Gods of Risk was kind of a miss for me. Gods of Risk uh, took place, place between books three and four. Uh, it does, I, I, see, I can't even remember the character's name right now. Uh, it does take point of view uh, from uh, Bobby's nephew, Bobby Draper, big character in book number two of The Expanse. And it just wasn't that interesting. It was just, it almost felt like kind of if, though if a YA writer kind of decided to dip their toes into the Expanse universe, because it just wasn't a story. I, was, I wasn't able to get invested in the character at all. And usually they have so much great stuff with the Poter Molecule and things like that that I want to learn to know more about. It just really didn't have anything to do with any of that. So it just, I appreciate that they were kind of trying to build a world of what life was like on Mars. You know, I get that, like the daily life on Mars, that was pretty cool. But outside of that, it was just kind of a miss for me. And you know what? I don't think all these novellas are going to be, you know, home runs for me, like the first couple were. I think it, what it does is it expands their world and things like that. But guys, I get this question a lot. Do I have to read the novellas? I don't think so. I don't think so. So far, you know, the three I've read, I don't think that you've learned anything in these two that make it to where the regular series isn't going to make sense to you. It's not a series like that. This isn't this isn't current day Lucasfilm where you've got to read like six comics to understand the rise of Skywalker. No, it's nothing like that. It just helps to build the world a little bigger and maybe takes a step outside of the protomolecule story and lets you kind of breathe and see some things going on maybe, you know, what would be a little outside the pages of the main story. So really good time getting back into The Expanse now that I'm into the regular series again, but that will be when I talk about December. So guys, that's what I read this month, but I guess it's time to talk about my book of the month. Now, as you can see, I didn't read a lot because... I, now, look, if you go by page count and word count, it's a normal, typical month for me. If you go by books, not, not really. I did. I mean, I really didn't read that many books this month, so this was kind of an easy choice for me. I don't count rereads, and I was mixed on that Stephen King book anyway, so it wasn't going to be that. So, guys, I got to go with The Mad Ship by Ms. Hop, the first lady of epic fantasy, finally has a book of the month on the channel here, guys. So, good times, good times. Actually, you know what? If I went, went, went back... No, because Assassin's Apprentice lost out to uh, to Revival by Stephen King. So yeah, this is the first time Robin Hobbs won a book of the month on the channel here for me. Now with The Mad Ship, what I liked about it is because it puts so much focus on Captain Kennet. Now Captain Kennet is the antagonist of the Live Ship Traders trilogy, and he is probably the most interesting antagonist I've read in a series since maybe Sandan Galacta. Now I know that's kind of controversial because a lot of people don't consider him an antagonist in the First Law trilogy. But I wouldn't call him a protagonist, you know? You might have been rooting for him. <laughs> but I, I think he's kind of in that same vein and that he's doing awful things. And you as the reader find yourself being like, yeah, I, I'm kind of down with that. I kind of like the decisions that he's making. You know, it may not be a, you know, a very nice thing that he's doing. But, you know, hey, he's looking out for number one. I can't fault him for that. And some of the things that he does, it's like I'm having a hard time taking away from what he's doing. But just a compelling character. And in this book, you get a lot of the uh, the backstory for his character. Some things that I never expected to be the case. And he continues to build his relationships with Wintro and with Etta. And I think it's just a really, really great story with those three right there. Now, the book is actually about Paragon the Mad Ship, but I still think that those three are very much the heart of that story uh, on a different ship than, you know, the Mad Ship. So I think that's a really, really cool twist that um, the, the main narrative of this book is about them trying to get the, 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 the Mad Ship going again, whereas the main part of the story for me was Kenneth and those other two characters and their relationship aboard a different ship. And I think that's what kind of made the Live Ship Trader trilogy just a really, really special read, is that the characters and their relationships were absolutely smash hits for me. You know me, guys, that's what I care about the most, the character work. And she hit a grand slam with the character work in this trilogy, and Mad Ship... I didn't like it as much as Ship of Magic, but it's like right there. We're talking flip a coin and it's landing on its edge. That's how close it is. But for this month, it isn't close for me. It is the Mad Ship. It's a great, great read. And I suggest that you guys do pick up the Live Ship Traders trilogy if you get a chance. You don't even have to read Farseer. And I know that makes the hobnobbers mad if I say that. 
But if you want to read Life Ship completely standalone by itself, you can do that. And, and I would say you'd have a good time with it, especially if you're into stuff like uh, like Black Sails or Treasure Island. I think that would be something that very much that you would be interested in. It isn't really heavy on the action. It's about the characters. So if you are very much into character work, you're very much into that life, I think that, guys, you will enjoy that trilogy as well as the Mad Ship. But, uh, yeah, that's my book of the month for November of 2022. Let's talk about a little bit of channel growth you guys i continue to say that i think that april through september seems to be historically the good times for this channel so very much seems to be like uh my viewership really enjoys the spring doesn't have a very good very good time with the fall or the winter now that can be you know the holidays real life things like that or you know it could be the content i choose to do i don't know i don't know but you know after i've got three years of historical data now and i can look at it and say i'm always kind of slow during these times i got to think there's something that is actually there. But uh, three, uh, sorry, 1,894 subscribers. That is down one. <laughs> one from from October. So, you know, nothing new to report there. 348,000 views. That's down 15,000 from October and 56,000 hours watched. Down 15, I'm oh, sorry, that's down 1,000 from October. So uh, all down in all three categories is never something you want to see as a content creator because, uh, you know, engagement and, and, and views and watch time is obviously the most important things there. And all of those had a big red arrow for me this month. So uh, never fun to see that. But like I said, I've set myself up to expect that after September, things just kind of fall off of a cliff here. And uh, I've just I've just grown to accept it. You know, so I'm not going to harp on it or anything. But uh, yeah, it's uh, same same stuff that's going on that went last month. So I'm not going to kind of regurgitate that. I'm just going to go ahead and move along, guys, to my most popular content for the channel this month. Now I released 17 new videos in November. It's about the same. I try to get out about four a week, had 30 days over the month. So uh, not that bad, I don't think. I, I think there was a couple times. Uh, I think I did have the flu at one point, so I only got two videos out one week. And then, or was that October? I can't remember. The days just flying by this time of year, guys. And uh, I also had a couple where I was just like, I'm just not feeling anything. I mean, guys, I've, I've pretty much abandoned Mike's media reviews at the moment <laughs> just because I haven't had the time. So I want to make sure that I continue to focus on this channel. And I am kind of doing that here. And that's why this month, like I said, I did put out that many videos. So Shelf Tour, the brand new updated one, 16,000 views as of this recording. That's something that people have been asking for for a long time. Uh, it's uh, Yeah, if you're into that kind of thing, you want to see everything I've got on these shelves and on my big stacks over here, then that's the video to watch. And that's the video to do it with. Uh, it's uh, always fun for me to kind of give a little tour. I didn't feel like I needed to do it for a while because I did one in 2020. And I was like, yeah, sure, my library's expanded since then. I could probably do one. Then I kept making the excuse of, well, when I get the room cleaned up, because I have book stacks up everywhere, and I finally realized, you're not going to do that. You know, so I just went ahead and made the video. And uh, yeah, that was it. But guys, that wasn't everything. You know, I still have books out in the, uh, in the game room and things like that. I have books in the closet. <laughs> I've got books everywhere. But that's the ones I have, you know, really on display and in this actual one working space right here. So I want to show that show the office a little bit but uh yeah a lot of fun and you guys seem to enjoy it as you always do with a book haul october 22 book haul that had 11,000 views as of this recording uh it was a kind of a unique book haul and it was the first one in a maybe ever where i didn't have uh viewers sent me anything uh so it was actually just like a full-on uh this is uh, what i got some from independent authors bought myself it was some things you know we talked about my digital purchases like i always do but uh, again book hauls are always a lot of fun and I, I do appreciate that you guys like watching those because uh, they're they're quite fun to make, actually. I'm going to be doing a, a new one for November here really soon. You know, that's always a lot of fun. Standalones and palate cleansers for 2023 has 11,000 views. That's worth, um, you know, as a fantasy fan, you get used to book one of nine, you know. So it's it's nice to have some, um, you can't start other series that you view as a palate cleanser, like a Drizzt or like a Dresden Files. But I just kind of want to focus on kind of the standalones, really, this, this time to kind of use as a big palate cleanser between some of those big epic fantasy reads to kind of, you know, just, you know, clear the cash a little bit and, you know, you know, let the mind get a little clear before you move on to the next big epic fantasy read. And uh, lots of fun things on there because it's a lot of books that I wouldn't have usually read before. There are some things on there that, you know, like some drama and some thrillers that aren't really in my wheelhouse, but I do want to try to give some of these different genres a chance. And that's what a, a video like that gives you the opportunity to do or, or a plan like this gives you the opportunity to do is to kind of step outside your comfort zone, try some of these other genres. So uh, lots of fun picks on there and got lots of good feedback on it. New series for 2023. 
that are, are in permanent ink on my TBR. Now, what this is, is books series, and they're only new series. I had a lot of people be like, oh, what about continuing this? I know this is just new series, series I have not begun yet that I plan to start in 2023. And unlike a usual of a you know, series I'd like to do next year, these are ones that without a doubt, I am going to be starting next year. And I'm not necessarily saying I'm gonna finish them next year, but I'm saying I will be starting these next year. And I enjoyed making this video because these are all things I'm very, very excited to do. I'm very excited to continue with some of the series I mentioned at the end, but I'm really excited to start those 10 brand new series in 2023. Should be a ton of fun. And I got a lot of interest from people who want to read some of those as well. So if you want to jump on that bandwagon, check that video out and you can join me on our Discord. It'll be a lot of fun to uh, have someone to talk to while I roll through some of those new series. Because you just start a new series, at first you got a lot of questions, but you're afraid to ask people who have, uh, you know, already read the series because they don't understand you're asking rhetorically and they just flat out will tell you. <laughs> it's like, I don't want you to answer my rhetorical questions. So uh, I think it's when you got a group of people that are brand new to it together reading it. You can bounce ideas off of each other, answer some questions, maybe something that flew over your head that someone else got. It's fun. It's fun. That's a whole essence of buddy reads to me. And then the secrets, guys. I gave away some secrets this month. The secrets to reading multiple books at once. Someone has nine thousand views that was really just kind of tongue-in-cheek guys there is no secret to reading multiple books at once it's just i go over some of the things that work for me why i've always kind of used that methods i just kind of just treat it as like tv shows i watch multiple tv shows at once so i have no problems reading multiple book series at once but i like to stagger them you know i don't want to say i don't want to read three fantasy books at one time because yeah they're going to bleed together so you know one fantasy one horror or one fantasy one one science fiction or a stephen king book or something at the same time that's quite fun to do for me because, you know, some days you'll wake up and be like, I don't feel like I'm having a bad day. I don't feel like going to that grim, dark world right now. Hey, let me pick up the sci-fi book and go out by, you know, Saturn right now and see what's going on in this book. And it just kind of can change your mood. So it helps if you're a mood reader. It helps you not be DNFing everything that I see so much right now. So it's just a method that works for me. So I kind of wanted to share some of those methods that work for me. And people seem to appreciate it for the most part. A couple of favorites that didn't really registered this month i guess uh swan song uh the review of the robert mccann book that's one of the best books that i've read guys in a long time and i want to talk about it what kind of unique is that uh robert mccann himself actually apparently saw it he did uh share it on his facebook page which i know is run by him a lot of those things like ah, so robert mccann's publicist did it. he doesn't share very much on his facebook page but i uh, the stuff that he does share is, is coming from him and so that's very cool to know that hey maybe he watched it i don't know maybe someone just pointed out to it but for me i think uh success as a booktuber is if you talk about a book and the author actually sees it. I think that's really, really cool uh, that, that they actually you know saw that you enjoyed something they did. I got to think as a, as a different kind of content creator, I know that I enjoy that. So I would imagine that an author loves to hear people say great things about one of their books. And I did say great things about Swan Song. And then I know a lot of people don't take them seriously. Uh, I didn't myself for a long time. But the Thanksgiving tag, I had a lot of fun doing that because it gave me an opportunity to talk about some series that I probably haven't or won't ever talk about on the channel in, in, in any other way. So uh, I think a tag video gives you the opportunity to kind of talk about some series that you haven't actually made content for on the channel, or you might not have plans to make content for on the channel. So uh, that was a lot of fun for me, and I want to thank Madison for tagging me on that because that's uh, probably the most fun I've, I've had in one of those tag videos. I, I love that she created her own her own topics and things like that, and it's much better than the one that I had planned to do, so I want to thank her for that because I did have one planned to do. She actually sent her video. She thought all those sucked, so she made her own. And she tagged me. I said, okay, well, I guess I'll do this one. But her her, her categories were really, really well done. And uh, yeah, I had a lot of fun with it. So uh, I hope that some people will maybe go back to that and just trust me. It's not just a normal tag video. I know it's a lot, a lot of people don't understand what they are. I talk about, you know, like 12 different book series in that video that I think you guys would get a lot out of. So flop of the month, guys. This is always a controversial topic because I know that a lot of people will say, hey, I have 300 subscribers and I would love to have that many views on a video. That's not what I'm trying to say. I just, flop of the month for me is, if you look at my audience size, guys, which is like 84,000 subscribers, when one less than 1% of your audience clicks on something, it's probably pretty much considered a flop. So uh, I gotta say, The Mad Ship, <laughs> which is my book of the month, that review being the flop of the month with 3,000 views as of this recording, uh, kind of disheartening. Uh, but you know, that was a decision that I made uh, based off of a poll of what people wanted me to do. Did they want me to review each individual 
Robin Hobb book as I went along through the Rumble of the Elderlings, or do they want me to do it as trilogies? Well, uh, the Ship of Magic review did pretty good. It had like 8,000 views, and this one, it's really, really struggling. It's uh, not, not doing that well. This is like right there with scary stories last month as far as analytics go. And I just, that's why I don't usually do sequel books. Because, uh, you know, if they haven't read the first one, they don't really interested in watching a video about the second one, you know. So I get that. And that's why I'm thinking for Tawny Man, I might go back to just reviewing, doing like an hour-long video reviewing the trilogy as a whole, I think, instead of three individual, like, 25-minute videos like I've done with these. I don't know. That's still up for debate. These are things that, you know, I'm trying to figure out methods to use on reviews to get more people more interested in actual book reviews again. Because, I'm not going to lie, guys, book reviews are the least popular content on my channel. You know, as people love a top 10, they love a TBR, they love all those kinds of things. Never going to stop doing reviews. I know when I say that, people are like, please don't stop. I'm not going to stop doing reviews ever. I have book reviews in the channel title. Never going to stop doing them. I'm just trying new things to try to get people interested in them again. Trying to get the thrill back. But yeah, flop of the month was my review for The Mad Ship, which is coincidentally my book of the month. How about some channel goals before I go for December, guys? Uh, as of this recording... I'm 1,100 subscribers shy of 85,000. That would be a fun little number to kind of hang my hat on at year end. Unless something really, really drastic happens, should be able to get that uh, because I don't think I've went... uh, It's been a long time since I've went had that that few of some new subscribers in a month but the, you know like I said the arrow has been trending down this time of year as it usually does but again with numbers like that guys it, it doesn't really matter to me in the end as long as you guys are having a great time that's what I care about but you know I think 85,000 is just a fun number you know it's a fun number to end on and then I can do an 85k live stream I have an excuse to do that for you guys if that's something that you guys want uh kind of Got a, kind of a heavy schedule in December as far as reading goes. You know, I got two Expanse books. I got those two Ash and Sand books. I got the new Christopher Rocchio. I got the new Brian Lee Durfee. Uh, so uh, it's one of those things where like I don't feel I don't feel annoyed by it. These are all books that I want to read and books I'm having a great time with. But uh, it's, it's one of those things where like you, even though nothing changes, you still feel like you are trying to scrap all this stuff and have it done before the new year so you can have a brand new clean slate when you start a new year. So uh, I've got lots of plans in January. You know, for, we're we starting a couple of read-alongs and things like that that I want to make sure that I'm clear for. So I'm just trying to clear the decks before then, but I'm having a great time with those books. But uh, yeah, focus on finishing those and then start uh, getting together all of my end-of-the-year content, you know, because I've done a few of those so far. You know, I got to do like my biggest disappointments. I got to do my top 10 books of the year. All those fun things that I like to do at year's end and you guys seem to enjoy as well but guys that was the month of november what was november like for you i want you to drop in the comments let me know what your favorite book that you read in november was what was the favorite video of mine that you or the favorite video that i made that you liked in november i'd love to hear all these things they always make good conversation so drop in the comments guys and i will talk to you there